not feel rubbish. And, um, and so that was always something that was part of my life, but it was certainly part of my life for my own development, not something that I ever anticipated being something that I would go into as a career. And I continued to work in the acting industry for many years, for most of my young adult life. I signed to Sony, I did Top of the Pops and MTV and all of this exciting stuff. And then in 2011, I became a mom for the first time and becoming a mom has its own challenges. And I now have two amazing daughters, 2011, 2013, I became a mom. And even the, the pregnancies and all of the stuff with that, there was a lot of things that were challenging during those times and really made me have to tap into my level of resilience and bounce back. Outside of acting, I was also working on my own things as a, an entrepreneur. I, I realized very early that if you want to be an actor, there's nothing more depressing than waiting for the phone to ring and hoping somebody else will give you that work. And so I decided that I would create my own thing. So for, for quite a few years, I was acting, I was modeling, I was singing, and I was also running my own businesses. Now that started to slip into the world of self-development again, because I was just talking about this stuff. And so people would come to me and I would do sessions on confidence and resilience with people. And it became something that was always in, in the background there for me. In 2014, my lovely little family was was dealt some news that I know that anybody that is listening to this would be horrified by and some of you might have experienced similar news yourself and it's just never the news that you want to hear. In 2014 we were told that my husband Ross had brain cancer. Grade four, rare, the kind of cancer that you know that even if you get through it your life is never going to be the same again. And I can remember after that diagnosis coming home from the hospital uh, in Coventry. And I, I remember it being a very surreal moment for me because up to this point in my life, I had been very driven as an actress. And anybody who's in that industry is very, very one track, very focused on what they do, very ambitious, you know. And I remember I had just finished doing a couple of episodes of Casualty. I was booked to do a film. There was lots of excitement around some stuff that I was doing at the time. And, and as soon as my husband was diagnosed, it was an instant shift in my mind of, I don't know why I cared about any of that stuff. And I remember coming home and looking at my house and nothing made sense. Nothing. I, I, I saw the post from days before lying on the table and the mess that I'd probably complained about the week before sat there and I didn't care about any of it. None of it mattered. And I sat down on my kitchen floor and I cried probably for the first time properly on my own. And I sobbed and it was, it was the tears that where you think that you will just not get back up from it. The tears, the ugly cries, the cries where you just, the despair. And during that moment, I had a level of clarity that I've never experienced in my life up to that point. And in that moment, I realized I could cry all day. It wasn't going to change anything. And that if I wanted to be happy, if I wanted to create a nice life around everything that was happening, it was down to me. And I decided in that moment to develop a whatever it takes mindset. So I picked myself up off the floor, dried my eyes, put on a ton of makeup and I got to work. And alongside brain cancers and seizures and hospital appointments and lots of difficult, difficult stuff, I built a self-development practice, a life coaching practice, I guess, for those that don't know much about the world of self-development. And and I started to help with the people and I started to talk about the things that I was doing to help my little family through things. And I started to get some traction in that world. Three and a half years, we had my amazing husband, Ross. And through all of that stuff, we lived our lives. We were happy. We potted around together, both of, both of us entrepreneurs. So lucky enough that we could do all of that stuff. And we banked the moments that we have together. In August of 2017, my husband Ross couldn't keep that cancer at bay any longer. 
and he died in Mighton Hospice um, in Warwick. And while I sat in the hospice and I was in there for about a month, I tapped into a level of resilience that I hadn't had to tap into before. And, and for those that have never heard me speak before, I speak very candidly about my grief and my loss. And I talk very openly about this. And perhaps for some people looking in, you, it might be hard to understand how I can do this. First of all, my husband and I were very open about every, very literal, very honest, very real about the situation. I believe in looking the tiger in the eye. And so I'm, I'm comfortable, but I know that you guys will understand that that's not the full picture. And as I sat by my husband's hospital bed, I realized that the thing that gets me through tough times, and this is still to this day, is doing is action, is doing something, is trying to find some sense among the chaos that is ensuing in front of me. And so as I sat there, I thought, and I started to look, actually, I started to look for people that could maybe lead the way for me. You know, is there anybody else that is a, a widow at 30? You know, is, is anybody else that looks and talks like me and I'm doing the Google searching, um, very miserable Google searching, as you can imagine. I just didn't find a lot of people talking about it in the way I wanted them to, in an honest, raw, real, upsetting, maybe, but honest way of talking about grief and about loss. And so I decided, sat by my husband's bed, that if I couldn't see it, then I would be it, you know, that I would be the person that talked openly. And so by his bed, I vlogged and I blogged and I talked and I shared my experience. And it was perhaps the level of, of catharticism for myself. I had grown up in front of a camera, so that was never an issue for me. And I felt that maybe there would be some sense made of, of what was going on. And maybe I would look back and understand it. Maybe I would be able to impact other people and help them. And I've realized up to this point that for me, dealing with anything big, I have to create and not consume. That when I slip into consuming, I could very easily pick up on other people's stuff and, you know, and their story and their version of the world. And that wouldn't get me through. Around the time of Ross's death, there was a huge amount of press around his death and, you know, a level of eyes on that I hadn't experienced before. Even in my world of acting, I'd had levels of fame and levels of um, press attention, but not to this level. And that was very challenging to deal with for me that everywhere I went, people knew that my husband had died. They knew my story and that was really new and that was a lot to take on board at that time. And I found that there was a lot of people following me online and wanting to know if that woman there can get through and talk about her husband's death so candidly and openly, why can't I deal with the fact the iron ends up the wall or my kids are doing my head in, you know? And so I got a lots and lots of messages off people. And during that time, I wasn't cultured. I wasn't able to really talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. So I decided again, well, I'll just create something. And I created a, a short 21 day online course called the Happy Me Project. I pushed it out into the world with zero expectation. You know, I'm a businesswoman, but I had, there was no, you know, excellent launch for this product it was just a necessity it was me going look I'm gonna package something good up for you and then when I talk to people I can give them that and it took on a life of its own in a very organic way because it was an answer to a question that my brand of straight talk and self-development where I just keep it as real and simple as possible I believe that self-development doesn't have to be fancy you know it just has to be easy to do and tangible and so I pushed this out into the world and within weeks there was hundreds of people doing this course online by the end of that year I had decided that I could people again and I launched the happy me project workshops over the next two years, I toured those workshops around the UK and I had 16 sellout workshop dates. I featured on Lorraine Kelly's show more than once talking about the Happy Me Project and the whole movement of the Happy Me Project certainly over the last few years has taken on a life of its own. And during pandemic time, at the beginning of the pandemic, I felt that same level of wobbles where I was like, this is crazy like the world is in a massive plague how do we deal with this and so again I, I thought about how I had dealt with all of my tough stuff in life and it had always been about creating not consuming and so I tapped straight back into that I showed up live every day for three to four months during the beginning of the pandemic in my Facebook group for the Happy Me Project I tried to give as much as possible because I wanted to be able to utilize the 
the skills that I have to help other people through it. During the pandemic year, in a time that has been extremely challenging, again, there's also been so many positives. And I'm a believer in looking for the good always because it's science. For every positive, there is a negative and vice versa. So we always have to look for the good. And so during these pandemic times, I've done some incredibly good stuff. And it's it's been it's been good for me personally to be able to help people through this stuff as well. I now have a book coming out in, I, I say, nobody knows this yet. I'm sharing this with you guys. Um, but I, I have a book coming out in 2022, The Happy Me Project. My podcast just launched. And I've been able to really tap into being able to help people. And, and certainly, again, that, you know, that has helped me as well, being able to find the positive in the difficult times. And certainly my own grief journey has been very much working on the job because I've been living it and breathing it and sharing it with others. And I know that that can, you know, I know from the messages that I get that I can help people to be able to work in that way. And so I know now that many of you that are watching this will have gone through your own grief, whether that's a loss of a human being or a pet or, you know, or it's the loss of the year that you thought you were going to have because, or the relate or a relationship, because grief isn't just one thing. And certainly as a group, we have, have massively grieved for things that we thought were going to happen that haven't. So when we open this up in, at the end of this, I'm more than happy to answer any questions on, on grief on resilience, on bounce back. And please don't hold back on that. I'm giving you the opportunity to ask any questions, those questions that you possibly wouldn't ask just anybody. I've talked about everything in terms of my husband's death and, and how I've dealt with that grief. And so please don't hold back. Is there anything that I, you can, I can offer or share? I would love to be able to. And I would like to say as well that any of you that are watching are absolutely more than welcome to come into my online community my on any of my social media platforms just search holly matthews and you'll find me on there and the happy me project facebook group will welcome you in open arms i still go in live every every week i go in there live there's a podcast live every week and we just talk about different aspects of self-development and and how we can work through all of this stuff because life is challenging right and we're all going to go through some stuff and if we can help each other through that by talking openly then you know, and this is what this is about. So thank you so much for having me. I hope that has been useful um, to some of you and I will pass the floor back over to the team.